too long. Now, you know, I want to go back to the Congo for a second mm-hmm. because uh, one of the times I, I look around, I'm going like, poor Congo. My goodness, first there's rubber, then then as soon as that's over, then then there's the then there'll be some trees, then there'll be some thing, then, 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 and then the latest thing is like coal tan. In fact, I told somebody, I said, you know, I can I can change the, I can stop war immediately. All I have to do is go to the Congo, and tell them brothers, look, just tell them to stop the coal tan. No more cell phones, no more drones, no more right. guided missiles, no more computers, or whatever happened. We can stop war right away. Why the Congo? What's going on? What, 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 I mean, the, the, specifically the Congo. I know it's a huge area, but I'm just saying. It seems like every they they keep on, and they keep on. I, tell me, I'm I'm, I'm just flummoxed about this. If, if you look at it, Africa in general, all the resources in Africa are being extracted by non-Africans. Still, Africa it's not it's not neo-colonial. It's colonial right now. Yeah. You know, there's nothing in Francophone Africa that can be done without the French okay. Mm. The French still run Francophone Africa. All the, all these leaders they allow to stay in are puppets for them, you know. Same with, with the Congo too, but it's almost all African countries. And whenever someone resists that, like a, a Mugabe or a Gaddafi, they're demonized in the West until they can be killed at anything, and nobody thinks a thinks thing about it too. Mm. You know, like... Um, Someone just said something to Mugabe recently, and Mugabe said, well, yeah, some French uh, come again. He said, yeah, you know, Africans never went to Europe, oppressed the people, and stole the resources. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, but they were just furious that he would bother to say that history. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's still going on. They still are selecting the leaders, and they're still extracting the resources. And they don't go to Africa. They don't go back to Africans at all. And then you have the people complained about corruption in African government. The, the corruption is from African political leaders who have been chosen by Europe or by America to or the United States to run the African countries. You know, like you talk, you asked about the Congo. Mobutu was one of the longest reigning dictators. He was there for 35 years or, or more. He was put in office by the United States government mm-hmm. after they killed a legitimate leader. Yeah, yeah. We, know, we we we. I I used to do a lot of uh, of, of um, how you say record a lot of forms, and I have John Stockwell saying he had the uh, body and hidden in the boot of his car. So yeah. you know that's that's well documented. But let, hold on, a I, I don't want to knock you off course. But I'm, uh, something came to mind because, mm-hmm. I, like like I said, I'm fascinated with this thing about the Congo and the resources. Now, if you move the tectonic plates back together, you know. Then the the Congo almost uh, directly aligns with the with with, with the Amazon with, with, with Brazil. In fact, the fact it, that it Amazon arrives with with Hasifa and with um, the projection of Brazil as so, part of South America. So what? So I'm saying that it's so like that swamp between just the Congo all the way through the Amazon basin seems to be that's the that's where all the resources and well, the Congo has a lot of different kind of land because that that area on the coast might be very similar to the Brazil coast, but you go a little further in and then you get these plains and you get this flat land. You get the, the Manianga is the forest, you know, and then you go up and the, the rest of it is turns into, um, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Mayombe is the forest, Manianga is the plains, it's flat plains. So, but you know, you have all of that in, in um, just in Africa, in, in Central Africa alone, you know. That, and I think that's one of the reasons some cultures came and the people were able to survive. They came to a, a terrain that's very similar to their own terrain, you know? Mm. If you came out of uh, Mayombe and you went to Cuba, or you went to um, uh, Brazil, you were home. Mm. You know, you were in a place you recognized. You might have to have some Amerindian discussion to understand the plants the same way, but you also had your own taxonomy, your own way of identifying plants and how you use them to, you know, so. Well, you just did what you did. You, you watched what the insects or the animals did, and you said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just follow what they did. I, I remember walking through the, um, through Brooklyn with a Congolese scholar, Fukiao, mm-hmm. and he would, would walk past an empty lot, he'd reach over and pull a leaf out, and everybody would think it's a weed or something, he'd pull it out, he'd put it in his hand, look at it, and roll, roll it like that smell it and tell you what it's used for and what you could use it for you know mm. it's another way of understanding plants you know understanding uh, um, uh, the human world the natural world you know so but plants being in particularly important to the Congolese you mm. know mm. but the, the back to this exploitation um, I, I re- somebody sent me an, an email uh, before uh, Obama came into office there wasn't really uh, ex- well, I should say, mi- military presence 
in, in Africa, American military presence in Africa. But right now, from the Seychelles all the way through Mali, through to 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 to, uh, no. the, the, there is a it's, there's bases. It's almost like they cut that part of Africa off. They they're cutting it off militarily. Military presence is put that way. I mean, the, the Djibouti has has an official base, but all these other countries and they they, they call it I forgot what they call, it, but it's like the, the how it goes is like this. Uh, you can't stop a hippopotamus unless there's a ditch. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's like this. This is almost like a ditch that they're that they're building. Friend, of course, what would be the reason to cut off this top, that top part of Africa from you know from that point on? on well, down? the top part of Africa, other than some kind of a strategic locale for military, it, just for yeah, for, yeah, for military, it doesn't have resources. The resources are all in that southern part of Africa, going down Africa, you know. That other part is basically desert, you know. Yeah, yeah but I'm looking at something else. I mean, I, I, I still go with this divide and conquer thing. Mm -hmm. The more, every time you want to divide, you, you, you're you going to conquer. And I'm going to get to that, another another point with that, but can you continue on that? No, just, just. Uh, I think when you, when you look at the United States, the United States is, is such a monster that they have military bases everywhere on the planet. And they invent enemies so they can ha invent a rationale for the military base. So they have Russia surrounded by military bases, you know, because it's considered their enemy. They're going to do the same with China, too. You know, and they're going to start, um, well, actually, the, and the major vehicle for that is New York Times, you know. They're the, the kind of official government plant for the position they want. And the Times does it more subtly than, say, something like the Post, but it's the same kind of racist dumb shit that is meant to... Um, uh, Identify the parts of the planet that we are we find problematic, so that we can eventually make some for you know uh, attack at them. You know, mm -hmm. in fact, I just saw a recent article about that about Venezuela. You know, and it was about um, the uh, resistance in Venezuela against the government and how the government in Venezuela is now running into problem. But they never mentioned that the resistance was founded in the United States, mm -hmm. that the resistance was coalesced in the United States, that the resistance is paid for from the United States, you know? And there's that never a discussion. It's, it's just that all oh, people are resisting. There's so many shortages and so many problems in Venezuela, and now people are now fighting and rioting all over the streets. Yeah, they never mentioned that. We are the part of the reason that they, they have problems in the country in the first place. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, yes, I know Venezuela's situation very well, but there's another situation that's brewing right now, and mm -hmm. I'm, it's, almost, it's almost bringing tears to my eyes. We're talking about Eritrea. Right. That's amazing. I hadn't even realized that Eritrea has been, uh, the, what, the, what's Re it? Recolonized? Or yeah, yeah, but it's been socialist for so long, but right. now they're trying to, I mean, how many people do they have? What's this, what does Eritrea have that they, that they just threatens? Uh, it's, it's, in other words, Eritrea is going to be like the new Cuba. Cuba is open up, so they need a. Uh, it's, it's, it's strange to me. I don't know right. what brings that on. Uh, well, the kind of paranoia and madness of the West. You know, there is a kind of Euro American madness that is all over the planet. Mm. You know, and we see it, and it pops up. You know, if you look at it as some kind of isolated incident, if you look at it as a continuation of uh, Eurocentrism and white supremacy, then it makes sense. As you start seeing it all over, it's about who's going to control the planet and the resources. The Crusades have never ended. You know, I said the, the Crusades are still going on. You know, except the, the people from the East are not fighting to go, to go into the West. You know, the West is still trying to conquer the East. And we have all these kind of puppet client states, like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. These are states created by England. Yeah. And they're created for a reason. Israel is another one. It created to do the beating of the West and to destroy any other kind of thing that would be oppositional to white supremacy and to Eurocentrism. You know, so yeah. you wonder when you see people get demonized, you look at what they say and why they get demonized. You know. Well, there's another thing that just that, that that I find somewhat disturbing. Also, it's almost like there's a global, and it's not just the West. It's a global attack. On women, there's so much you know uh, rape used as a as a thing for war, you know, but just the subjugation of women. A, a, a tool of war. I, mean, I understand, but I'm just saying maybe it's just a meeting. No, it can't be an immediate. It's, it's it's almost like it's almost like um, um, the the male gender is losing power, and before they lose power, they say, well, before we let you take over, mm -hmm. you women, to re, re uh, destroy the patriarchy. Let, let, we're, we're, we're going to we're going to take as much of you out as, as possible. Is, it might, yeah, you what, might be right, but but it's funny because we're about to have a woman president of the United States. 
But if you think that means something different, it doesn't. Well, yeah. I always think with mentalities anyway, but go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, because we have, we have a black president, and he's just been just as bad as any white president we've had. You know, he's bought into white supremacy and into Eurocentrism as a model and has no problems with it. Well, um, same with Hillary Clinton. She's bought into white supremacy, but she doesn't, she doesn't even talk about it that way. And into uh, she, she's like a, more of a warmonger than any other president we've had. There's no war that she's ever seen that she hasn't liked or supported. Yeah, yeah we, call it, we call it a chicken hawk warmonger. Right. But, I, I'm, but I'm talking about a grander scale. I mean, is this, okay, maybe I should do it this way. Okay. Maybe you should answer your own question if you no, want to not give you the answer you want. No, <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Danny Dawson beating up on me. Um, uh, let, 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 yeah, I gotta go this route. It 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 uh, it seems to me. It seems to me. Uh, at least uh, when I listen to Neely Fuller Jr., I guess this thing. <laughs> but when I look back in history, uh, it's it, it starts like this. Uh, it, there used to be a, a, an equality, an equality, right? And then somehow the patriarchy took over. Then for patriarchy, that's not like Rudis word, you know. Well, I don't know about all that stuff, but 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 then then you get to something like, uh, uh, let's say even even in Egypt, you know, when when you when you have the the pharaohs or whatever have you, even though they're male and female, it's still like a that then you have this whole thing about man as 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 a living god or or whatever have you. Then you have the the the, the Roman system where when a warrior king a warrior becomes king, so you still have this. Uh, you now you have you have patriarchy doubled on with this um, male, male supremacy, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Then you have the royalist system comes after that, where you have now, oh, now anybody in, that has blue blood is, is supreme. Then you then you tack on a race as a false construct with that. So now you have a point where all this whole thing we, we call our Anglo racist white supremacist system that people are buying into for whatever reason, you know right. what I mean? But that is a complex, is a, is a evolutionary thing of all all these things. Now, how do you unbraid this? How do you unwind this? How do you get? Back? I'm not saying get back to the matrix. I don't know if, necessarily if, know if I agree with your kind of chronology. Well, okay, give me the chronology. You know, I don't, well, I don't know if there's one that I know of. You know that, that this one begets this, begets this, begets that. You know, but I think there was a, a time, at least in when I say very, very ancient times, where women were the equal of men. You know, and I don't know how it devolved into the, this kind of patriarchy that we now see as a norm, you know. so, And the problem is right now we're at, at a, a, a kind of breaking point where when you see women who are, arise to power in this system, they are just sustainers of the patriarchy. They're, they're using that same model, you know, so, you know, I mean, it's, and I, I think that model has also uh, extinguished itself, it, 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 that whole kind of at war with everything. <laughs> so, you know, you're at war with nature. You know, you have to conquer nature. You have to conquer a land. You have to, you know, um, domesticate it. That, part of that is, is evolutionary too, but part of it is also philosophical. That, that comes with the tradition of um, uh, Abraham. All of Abraham's children act like that. All of the children of Abraham, the Jews, the Christians, the Muslims, all act like that. They all act like they are supposed to uh, have, they have domain over the planet, a uh, dominion over the planet. And it's just poison, 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 you know, so. Mm.